Hi, this is David from Electric Teaching, and I'm going to show you how to graph in a hyperbola from expanded form, which means we're going to have to complete the square. Um, the first thing I want to go over is just recognizing and kind of understanding the vocabulary here. This is one point of mathematics where it does get a little confusing with the vocabulary, and I want to show you why. This equation right here has both an x squared and a y squared, and they have different coefficients, and most importantly, there's a minus sign on one of them and a positive on the other. What that means is that we have a hyperbola. I try to teach my students that when they have opposite signs, the x squared and y squared, those are the most powerful of the x and y terms, the, most, the highest degree ones. When they have a, an opposite sign, that means they kind of want to run away from each other, and that's why we get that hyperbola graph which ends up looking more sideways okay, or up and down. And the next thing I always tell them is that the way you recognize if it's going up or down or sideways, horizontal or vertical, is which one's positive. I try to make sense of it. Since the x squared's positive, the way I've tried to remember it over the years is that we are going to see a graph that looks more like that is the horizontal uh, trajectories of the graph. Okay. So that's the first thing. The other thing I wanted to explain is the word standard form and expanded form. Expanded form is sometimes used. Standard form is definitely the word that is always used in books. So this is considered, this formula is considered expanded because it's expanded out from multiplying out the square binomials and then getting it equal to zero. With hyperbolas and ellipse, this is important, hyperbolas and ellipse, we want to get it equal to 1. We want to complete the square, and then we will have it in standard form. This gets a little confusing because if you think of a graph, and I'm going to show you a graph real quick here, um, a 4x squared minus 12x plus 9 equals 0. Since x squared is the only one, since x is the only variable that's squared, and we don't even have a y in this one, um, and actually, you would say that this is equal to y over here on the right. You would say that's equal to y in a sense for the f of x. But what I want to show you here is this is actually considered a standard form equation with parabolas. This is why it gets confusing because this is clearly an expansion. I don't know if you see it, but this is an expansion of the binomial 2x minus 3 squared. So if this was the equation, y equal, or as we always tend to do, we tend to set it equal to zero to determine things, that is what we would say is a um, uh, uh, vertex form of the uh, parabola. So it gets a little confusing. This is considered expanded, but this is also considered standard form of, a, of parabolas when we learn it in advanced algebra and regular algebra. So just trying to understand the vocabulary there a little bit. We've got standard form is equal to 1. Like I said up here, standard form is equal to 1. And we will try to put it in the form x minus h squared over a squared minus or positive, depending on what we're doing here. In this case, it will be a minus y. y minus k squared over b squared equal 1. Um, I don't care where the a and b goes because I find the, uh, I, I just want to understand that there's a square item in there. Okay, so that's the beginning. I'm sorry for going on a little bit, but I wanted to be sure you understand the vocabulary. I'm going to complete the square of this one. I'm going to recognize that I've got a coefficient, coefficient multipliers in front of the x squared and y squared that are not equal to 1. That means I have to factor out of the first two terms, the x squared and the x term, the y squared and the y term. Those are the square and linear terms or quadratic and linear terms I'm going to work with. So I'm going to get them together and factor out the 9... Okay, and get a 4x from the 36x. Take 9 out of the 36, divide it out, factor it out, as we say, and you're going to get left the negative 4. I always like to put a little box to remind me that there is something I will add to this equation that wasn't there before, which requires me to add to the other side or subtract to the other side or whatever I need to do to adjust it equally. Keep that in mind. Uh, with the y's. Let's see, we're going to factor out a negative 4. This gets tricky. Mind the signs. Be very careful. Okay? I will actually take it, I will actually look at this and distribute it in my head to be sure I've done it correctly at the end. I recommend doing that. It only takes a couple seconds. 
from the positive 8. Take out a negative 4 and you get a negative 2y. Again, I put a little box to remind me about the, the fact is there was nothing there before that I will be adding something that I need to adjust. And I tend to just move everything else, the constant, to the other side. Algebraically, that's now equal to 4. Sorry about squeezing it in over there. Hope you don't mind. Okay, well, now the completing of the square. The square we want is a quantity squared. We're looking for an x quantity squared here. So we the trick is, is half of that value. I always say half of b goes in the binomial, and then the square of it goes up there. That's the adjusting part. So the adjusting part here is a 4. We are clearly adding a 4 there. Okay, so keep that one in mind, bring down the 9. Don't lose the 9 coefficient in front of the binomial square. Negative 4, y, okay, half of minus 1 squared, half of b in this case. Think of it as a b is an a squared, ax squared, or ay squared, plus by equals c. So I'm thinking of, really thinking about that standard form way down there in the, in, in, when I try to talk about this to connect it to things you've seen before. What is the square? What is the square of that? That looks like we're going to add a 1 into the box. But be careful. We are actually not adding a 4 on this side. We're adding 9 times 4. That means we need to adjust by adding 36. We need to adjust by adding 36. I'm going to clean this up here a little bit. I'm going to clean this up here a little bit so that we can see this. Get me there. Okay. So... All right, so now we need to add a 36. We need to add a 36 to adjust for the 4 that got put in the box that was really times a 9. What's the adjustment over here? Looks like we have a minus 4. That means I will subtract 4 from the other side. We now can finish off the equation. This looks to be equal to. That cancels with that. And we got a 36. This is, by the way, sometimes a form that you'll see in a question in many books. They'll start you off at this point in many books and ask you to put it to graph this equation. All right, let's come back, divide by 36, because we do want it equal to 1. We do want it equal to 1. So the next action I, I tell my students to do is divide by 36 and cancel away. 9 cancels with the 36, leaves a 4. 4 cancels with the 36, leaves the 9. We now have the form we want, x minus 2 quantity squared over 4 minus, minus, let's see, a y minus 1 quantity squared over a 9, and it is equal to 1 because 36 over 36 is a 1. I usually tell students that that makes a big 1. I look at it that way. That's how I like to cancel sometimes. So let's see if we can get this graph before I get too long in this video here. So let me get a quick graph here. We'll bring that, shrink that up a little bit so we can see it. All right. The way I like to graph these is I like to make a box. I like to find the center and make a box. It's a guide box. It's like a uh, scaffolding is one way to think about it. So what makes zero and what makes zero out of these binomials tells me the shifts, horizontal and vertical. What makes 0 with x is 2, so I'm going to go 2 to the right. What makes 0 with the y is 1, I'm going to go 1 up. So there's my center at the 2, 2, centers at the 2, comma 1 point. Okay, the box that I make has a displacement of the square root, okay, the square root of the value under the x. And that's my horizontal displacement from center. So then I'm going to go 2 out to the right and 2 out to the left. Okay, underneath the y controls the y displacement for the box. Square root it, three, down, three up and three down, and there we go. So now we're going to see this is where, if you were to make an ellipse, this is the, this is where the the, the covertices and vertices of the ellipse. But we're going to make a box here. We're going to make a box here, and we're going. We're going to actually graph the hyperbola through the using this box as a guideline. The first thing you do is you want to have the asymptotes. You want to have the asymptotes be the diagonal through the center and through the corners of that rectangle that we just made. I call it a box. So that's one asymptote. The other asymptote comes down again through the collinear points of the center and the and the corners of the box. <clears throat> Now we're going to actually graph this, and we'll talk about the focus points last. We're almost done here. 
We're going to actually graph this. We're going to take this. We're going to figure out that because x squared is positive, this is going to have the vertices on the midpoints of the side of that box. Okay, and those vertices you can see are clearly 0, 1. Looking at it myself, trying to say clearly. And let's see, we're going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. So there's where the two vertices are. We just have the focal point to finish off. So let's get the graph in there. Start from one of the vertices and use the asymptote to come guide it right on up. Last thing we need to do is realize that the focus points are always a point inside the curve. It's somewhere in there. The way you recognize it and find it easily is make a right triangle out of the, the using the corners of the box and the vertice in the center. So you can see I'm going to make a right triangle. I'm going to do it in black here. And that way, if you look at this hypotenuse, the hypotenuse here, this will fall. Think of it as falling right to the focus point. So I need to figure out that length. Since the displacement was 2 on that box, let's redraw that box so we can see it clearly, 2 and 3, then we're looking at what? 9 squared plus 4 squared is equal to C squared. Excuse me, not 9 squared. I squared them both. So 9 plus 4, we're looking at 13. This is root 13. So now we know the focus point is from the center, from the center. So I'm going to go 2 plus or minus the root 13, okay, comma the 1. And that's where you'll find the focus point. My name is David. I'm from Electric Teaching. I hope this.